Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please be seated. Folks, you're very welcome this morning uh, to St. Andrew's for our service of Holy Communion. Uh, just some notices to give before I uh, hand over to Stuart to lead the service. Uh, members of the Select Vestry, if there are any of you uh, here this morning, folks, do hold back after the service for just a couple of minutes. And we do promise it will be only a couple of minutes uh, just to uh, get something decided. That will be great. Thank you. Townsend Fellowship folks are meeting on Saturday the 28th uh, of September at 10.30am in the Minor Hall. Uh, that morning there will be the Reverend Norman Patterson and his wife coming uh, to talk about Project Romania. It is open uh, to everyone. That's the Townsend Fellowship, Saturday the 28th of uh, September, 1030 in the Minor Hall. Also, a, another evening coming up this is on behalf of the Diocese itself and Habitat for Humanity. Uh, they're arranging a trip to Romania, we're keeping on the theme of Romania, for uh, August of next year, August 2025, specifically for 16 to 18 year old young people. It's just for them, 16 to 18 year, year old young people who will be that age bracket in August 2025. There's an information evening coming up in Church House in Armagh. That is the 30th of the month, so it's not far away, at 7 p.m. And uh, for all folks of that age bracket who'd be interested in, in a trip to Romania under the auspices of Habitat for Humanity are, are welcome along with their parents and carers that evening. So I'll commend that to you as well. That's all our notices. Stuart, thank you very much. Thank you. Our service of Holy Communion this morning is to be found on page 201 in the prayer book. And we begin with the greeting. The Lord be with you. And a word of scripture from Daniel. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. For we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he set before us. Let us join together in the collect for purity. Almighty God, Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, Almighty God. our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 584, Jesus Calls Us.
remain standing and turn to our prayer books again, to page 203, and we join together in saying the Gloria. Glory to God, in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. The collect appointed for today, the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 116. On, you'll find this on page 728. And we say verses 1 to 8 in alternate half verse. Psalm 116, page 7 to 8. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me, all day I call to him. The snares of death encompass me, the pains of hell took hold of me. My grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. The Lord watches over the simple. I was brought very low, and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord. In the land of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We now hand over to our rector again for our children's talk. Thank you, Stuart. Children, you're very welcome uh, to join me at the front. Any of the children are very welcome to come and give me a wee hand this morning, guys. That'll be great. Now, again, just feel free to find a, a soft spot somewhere there. to be seated. Okay, guys. Now, I'm going to take a wee seat myself this morning. Must be getting on years. Take a wee seat here, take a rest. Okay. Oh, there's some more guys. Okay. Now. All right. How you all doing, guys? All good? Good. Good stuff. Now, this morning, I'm going to ask a question, guys. And you have to be really honest, okay? Now, I'm letting myself open uh, to this one, guys. Okay, the question is, what do you really think of me? <laughs> now the adults aren't allowed to chime in because they'll say all sorts of terrible things so I'm waiting for something lovely from you guys what do you think of me? <laughs> are you all stunned into silence? nobody going to come forward at all what do you think of me? my goodness okay, well I do like the silence that does help a wee bit there as well now guys this morning there's a question and we're going to hear it in the reading in a moment or two and Jesus says who do you say I am? okay, Jesus asked a question to his disciples who do you say I am? it's a big question it's a big question now this morning guys in a wee moment we're going to throw up a few things in the screen, okay? Things that might look similar, but they're not, okay? But first of all, I've brought along, if I could just get past you there, girls, for a wee second, that'd be great. 
I brought along a little item here. Now, I want to thank Gloria for the bag. Gloria, thank you very much. But as you can see, this particular item is bursting out of it. <laughs> so he's a wee bit on the big side. But we're going to bring him out. Who do you think is in here, guys? First of all, can you tell? It is. It is a Winnie the Pooh character. Does anybody know who it is? Can you tell me the legs or the little tail might give it away? Anybody know? He's a very kind of depressed sort of a character. He's got a very, very low voice. He's a bit sad. Anybody know? We'll open it to the adults. Well, guys, who do you think's under here? <laughs> they said Eeyore they must be watching it more than you guys <laughs> you watch it Jacob yes you definitely knew it was a Winnie the Pooh character there well, let's take the bag off his head okay the poor fella there he is in all his resplendence alright there he is now he does look like Eeyore doesn't he yes he looks like the character but there's something different about this guy he is sad, Henry, but he just looks like an ordinary toy until, if you listen very carefully, we'll do it again, will we? You can hear him. He's very low. He's very sad. <laughs> he says, hello, it's Eeyore. Thank you for being my friend with his very low, sad voice. Now, until you press him, you don't know he's going to say that because he just looks like an ordinary toy. But in the middle, there's a little voice thing and it allows him to speak. You might have toys like yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you probably do at home. So that's Eeyore. Not all that he seems at first light. Okay, so you have to press him to get the voice out. Okay. Now, we're going to bring up some things on the screen, guys. And I want you to tell me if there's a difference in them, apart from maybe color and stuff like that. Okay. Are you ready? Okay, Chris, so we'll throw up the first pair. Now, what's that? What is it, boys? Go together. Crocodiles. Crocodiles. <coughs> yes, they are, but only one of them is a crocodile. What's the other one? Good man. It's an alligator. Look at their noses. That's how you tell the difference. You see that? <laughs> that's it one has a round stumpy nose the other one has a long pointy nose so there's a difference between the alligator and the crocodile well done guys well spotted there as well now next slide please Chris okay now they're different in colour these okay guys but what are they both they're sauces yes they're sauces but there's one big difference not just colour or flavour something else Henry what is it <laughs> Almost, good man, good guess. One is served hot, the other is always served cold. On the left you have, well my left, you have pepper sauce, always hot. Okay. The other one is ketchup, red sauce, whatever you want to call it, always served cold. So there's a difference. They are similar, they're both sauces, but there is that main difference. And finally, Chris, the last one. What's that, guys? Or what are they? What is it? Good man, Henry. You have had it on the nail. One is a jacket. The other is a coat. What's the difference? <laughs> Go for it again. Jacob? That's right. That's right. And the classic coat, everybody, is supposed to go to your knees. A jacket only goes to your waist. So that's the main difference. Although one keeps you warm, yes, and one then will protect you from the rain. Henry, you want to add to that? That's right, that's right. There's all sorts of wee differences. Guys, when you look at those things, there are similarities, but there are differences as well. And the question Jesus asks, who do you say I am? Some people might say, you're a good man, Jesus. You're a good man. You're a prophet. You're a good healer. You're a miracle man. You do all these wonderful things. And some of us might say today, who never actually see Jesus in the physical sense, may say, he was someone to follow. Someone who does good things. He's good morals, good values, good things to follow. 
But guys, the most important thing is to answer that question is Jesus might be many different things, but the most important thing is, who do you say I am? To answer that is, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. That's the most important thing, how to answer that question, that Jesus is in our lives, in our hearts. He is our Savior and our Lord because of his death on the cross for each and every one of us. Jesus can be mistaken, even in this world today. They call him all sorts of nice things, yes. But until he's Savior and Lord, that's the true Jesus that you and I want to know in our lives. So things look very similar in life, guys, okay? But when Jesus asks the question to you and to me this morning, who do you say I am? You can say all those nice things about him, but until he's Savior and Lord, then we'll not go to heaven. We'll not know him as our king. So he must be in our hearts and in our lives. Henry, you look like you're going to ask a question there. Go for it. Is it gone? <laughs> Is it gone? Good, no, don't worry. You can get me at the end. Get me at the end. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. We're going to pray, and then you can go back to your seats again. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning for this wonderful life that we have. And there are many things in life that look very similar, but with great differences when we look at them a little closer. And Lord, the question you asked each and every one of us in church this morning is, who do you say I am? And Lord, we could say that you're a good man, a good prophet, a, a, good, a good king even, a good healer, someone who makes miracles. All those things are true. But most of all, Jesus wants the answer. You're my Savior, Lord. You are the one who saved me from my sins. And I want to follow you all my days. So, Lord, help us not to mistake you for anything else. But most importantly, that we know you as our Savior and our Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. You can pop back to your seats again. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you to our rector and thank you to all the children. It's good to, always good to see so many children out. And we have a chance to stand and sing again. Um, and this time the words will be on screen. Uh, if you wish to follow it in a book, it's in the Songs of Fellowship book, uh, number 1187, Before the Throne of God Above.
hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse 27. Glory, Glory to you, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to follow it in the few Bibles, you can find it on page 1012. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, Who do people say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. And as we gather around your word, Lord, we ask that we hear you, the living word, speaking into our lives. May our hearts and minds be open to respond to you in the power of the Holy Spirit as we hear your words and we pray your words alone. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I'm sure there's not too many uh, in church this morning hasn't had uh, the statement said to them, do you know, you look awful like so-and-so, or you look awful like this person, that person, or the other have you ever had that? Someone coming up to you and say, you know, you look awful like so-and-so. And they might even mistake you for somebody else. There's a man I know very well, and he literally is the spitting image of John Candy, the late American comedy actor. And he has the same way of going on as well. And in fact, he's called John at times as a nickname because of that. We probably have had it from time to time. You look like so-and-so. Or you might have in your mannerisms, you go on like so-and-so. There's three groups of people I want to address this morning. And we'll all fall into at least one of them. Three groups of people. The first group are those who look as if they're saved, or act as if they're saved, and yet they are not. Those who what we call talk the talk. Those who look the part, but actually do not have Christ as their Savior. You look like Him, you go on like Him, but you're not actually in Him or with Him. There are those maybe in church this morning who are not sure if they have salvation or not. It's a lack of assurance in a person's life. And there is a group of people like that. And there's those who are sitting here this morning, no, I do not have Jesus as my Savior as yet. Those who look as if they're following the Lord, those who are not sure if they have salvation, and those who definitely know they don't. 
first of all, this word salvation. Unfortunately, today, when it is preached about, it can be very divisive amongst people's mindsets and how they accept it. I don't need saved. I'm all right. And all sorts of reactions like that. And some preachers get it in the knack when they talk about it. Acts 4 verse 12 tells us there's no other name under heaven. That's Jesus. By which you and I must be saved. Notice the word must. It's an imperative. Acts 4.12, one of those great verses, there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And why? Well, we do hear it quite often, but how real is it in our lives? Jesus came down to earth, God's love to you and I, because none of us can save ourselves. We're born into a world of sin. We're tainted with it before we even commit one. And over and over again, over the centuries, God looked down on the world. These people cannot get to be with me forever on their own. God cannot look on sin of any description. It has to be got rid of, cleansed, washed away, before you and I can look on the full presence of God in heaven. And so in His love and His mercy and grace, He sends his son Jesus, to die on a cross for you and I so that we could go to heaven by his grace, no other merit, simply by his wonderful favor to you and I. We, we don't deserve, but he gives it. So folks, for us to see the next world of glory, we have to receive Jesus as Savior. Not anything short of that. As we're saying to the children earlier, yes, we can say all the nice things about Jesus. We can believe in him in our heads, but never actually receive him as Savior. All those other things fall short of glory. As Romans tells us in chapter 3, all have sinned, all, no matter how good we think we are, and fallen short of the glory of God. Falling short not a place we want to be when you and I have our time of passing from this world. Jesus asks two questions in the text we read this morning from Mark 8. The first one is, who do people say that I am? And then he turns to the disciples, but who do you say that I am? The first one's to do with the world. As we know out there, folks, in the world, there are many forms of teaching and schools of thought about the meaning of life and what it's all about. And some of them are very subtle, and some of them are very, yeah, that must be it. And God could be mentioned in the middle of it. Even Jesus could be mentioned. A similar gospel, what is called, but not the real thing. Diluted forms of it, misconstrued forms of it, from God's Word, and even those who don't even look at the Bible and make up their own gospel. There's all sorts of thoughts out there. Who do people say that I am? And all of these things fall short of full truth and the implication of what salvation actually is, including those who look the part, form of the gospel, but denying the power thereof, and it's in there, folks, in God's Word, that's the gospel. Nothing outside of it, nothing to add to it, and certainly nothing to take away from it. Second question, who do you say I am, says Jesus? You and I are all accountable, folks, for our decision to follow Christ or not in its fullness. No one else carries us. How we answer this conveys results of all those three questions that we looked at earlier. How we answer, who do you say I am? If Jesus was to ask you that this morning, how would you respond? Do we know in our hearts that we're only playing an act with him? Or are we unsure that we're actually going to be with him? Or do we know for sure we're not with him yet? How we answer that question 
responding to that gives us our assurance if we trust in Him that we know He is our Savior that we don't simply just look the part but actually it comes from the heart outwards. The heart is changed and transformed first. Don't just talk the talk but walk the walk is the old saying, the old strap line. Peter's answer to that question is you are the Messiah. That's okay. You are the Messiah. We can say things like that, still not know Jesus as our Savior. It's okay to say glib phrases about him and talk about him. And even know he is the Messiah, but yet we haven't accepted him for ourselves. Verse 31, chapter 8. You see, Jesus knows that Peter's answer is simply a title. He has to go on and speak more about what is going to happen. He begins to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed, and after three days rise again. And there is a gospel in a nutshell. Jesus will suffer, die, but rise again. And this is the first time of him telling that to the disciples. And he has to say this over and over again to them. There's our assurance, folks. If you're unsure of your salvation this morning, if you've given your life to Christ, but you still have that ill assurance of salvation, the Bible's full of Scripture that can give you assurance. Jesus existed. He died for you and I, and He rose again. The facts are there in Scripture. When we receive that fully for ourselves, assurance will set in. If it's still not there, we need to question ourselves. Am I fully given to the Lord? And the necessity of doing it is there again, verse 35. Those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. It's a promise. Those who want to save their life, in other words, do their own thing, they will lose it eternally. Those who lose their life, those who give their life over to me fully, says Jesus, and for the gospel will save it eternally. It's a necessity. But perhaps you're saying in your heart this morning, Jeffrey, I just can't go that far yet. I'm not in that place yet. That's responding to the third question. I definitely know I don't have Jesus as Savior yet. Let's look at verses 32 and 33. Jesus is saying this all quite openly about his death and resurrection. Peter doesn't like it. He takes him aside and begins to rebuke him. You're not going to die, Lord. Now he means well. But he's actually holding up the gospel and the completion of it. Turning and looking at his disciples, he rebukes Peter and says, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. It's a rebuttal to us folks who say, I'm not just ready to go there yet, Lord, to fully follow you, to give all to you. Peter doesn't want the gospel completing yet. He's not aware of that, but that's what he's doing and saying. And it has to be complete in our lives, folks. No half measures. We're still held by the enemy until we come to Christ. He holds us. We mightn't be aware of that, but he holds us. My daughter Sarah is not aware of this, as I do with my kids sometimes, but a little story about her. When she was a little girl, Sarah had an absolute abject fear of needles, particularly those that nurses might use on you or a doctor occasionally. And one occasion we had to bring her in when she was a little girl, and uh, she was getting tested for something. And the scan was grand. She loved the scan. No bother at all. And I told the nurse who was present, listen, she will go amok if you produce a needle. And I could see up the back. You know, nurses, any present might know this. Hold the needle up your back. Child won't see it. Child's not stupid. What have you got behind your back, sir? I asked. <laughs> and the needle was there. It was for a dye, for a dye test for her. 
And she was having none of it. She literally was in a cool sweat. And I said, I'm sorry, you're not going to complete this today. She had to be dead still to receive it. So that was out the window. It was a step too far for Sarah. And folks, you and I can be like that with Jesus. To have him fully as our Savior is a step too far, we may say in our lives. But that step too far will keep us a step away from glory. It is a choice. Verse 34 of Mark 8. Jesus calls the crowd and the disciples and says to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. It is a choice. There's free will, folks. If any want to become my followers, then we have to deny ourselves or to give all of ourselves over to the Lord. We're all in or we're all out. We have to give ourselves fully over to the Lord. We're to be no facsimile of the gospel. A challenge to folks who act as if they're saved, but actually aren't. Talking the talk, that's as far as it goes. Those who have a lack of assurance this morning, be assured, folks. Give your life to Jesus. The assurance will follow if we're fully given to him. Ask ourselves, are we fully there? And finally, the challenge of a lost eternity to those who haven't yet received him or just aren't there in that place. Pray God's Spirit moves among all in those three groups this morning. Those who look the part, yes, I pray your, God's Spirit will actually change the heart first. Those who are not sure, receive his assurance this morning. And those who definitely aren't there to receive him, for the first time and for forever. Let's pray to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the dialogue with the disciples in Mark chapter 8. Lord, you asked them first, who do people say I am? And the world has all sorts of thoughts about who you are and still is the same today. But Lord, you ask them personally then, who do you say I am, which is more important? And Peter says, you are the Messiah. That is true. But if it's only a title that we say, it means nothing. Father, that's why you had to continue to talk about your death, your resurrection. Why, Lord, you talked about people, if they want to become a follower, they are to deny themselves, fully follow you. We thank you, Father, for explaining that to the disciples and the people present in that day and the fullness and challenge of the gospel. And I pray, Lord, if we find ourselves in any of those positions this morning for what we asked earlier, that we find your Spirit. And give us, Lord, true following of you if we only look the part, if we're only a facade of Christianity. For those of us who are ill-assured, that your spirit will give us the assurance when we trust in you. And those of us not yet with you, I pray we leave it no longer but to put our full trust in you. For there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thank you to the Reverend Jeffrey for his messages to us this morning. We now turn to our prayer book again, page 205, and we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary 
and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For our intercessions this morning, we use the form on page 237, form of intercession one. Almighty and ever-living God, hear the prayers which we offer in faith and love. For peace and for your salvation to be known throughout the world, as our thoughts and prayers continue to be with the people of Ukraine and Russia, with those in DR Congo, Israel, Gaza, Yemen, Nigeria, and many other troubled parts of the world rarely mentioned that the hearts of all peoples may be influenced by the power of your Holy Spirit, and that peace, justice, righteousness, and truth may be established among the nations. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and for the unity of all Christian people, and for the work of all our mission partners. For all who serve and lead in your church, for bishops, priests, and deacons, for our Rector Geoffrey, Archbishop John, and all who are training for ministry and praying that many more will be called to ordination. For all your people growing in the faith of Christ and passing it on to generations yet to come. For parents, teachers, Sunday school teachers, and all Christian youth leaders. For all who live and work in this community, for local politicians, businesses and farms, schools and voluntary community groups. For families and for all who live alone, for the bereaved and for prisoners. For all who are sick in body or in mind and for those who care for them. For all emergency workers, healthcare workers and care home staff and for physical healing and restoration according to your will. For all in authority, and especially for Charles, our King, and all the royal family, and for continued recovery from recent illnesses. For all who have been entrusted with the responsibility of government, for our national and local political representatives. For those who work for peace, justice, and righteousness throughout the world, and for those involved in mediation, for the police and all our security forces and personnel, and for those who command and direct them. Rejoicing in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, and of all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear, we commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And turning back to page 206. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue, we join together in page 207 in 
the prayer for humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And as we offer one another a sign of God's peace, we stand to sing our offertory hymn number 643. Please be seated. Our service continues at the bottom of page 208. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. Today, we are using Eucharistic Prayer 3, which you'll find on page 216. 
The Lord is here. And the is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen, amen, amen. Turning to the bottom of page 218. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you, remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love. Give us grace and open the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say to gather the post-communion prayer at the top of page 221. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand to sing our final hymn, number 581.
Please be seated. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen.